Welcome back to Vintage HLC Show and Tell. Today we're going to look at the Wells Art Glazes. I talked a little bit about the Art Glazes in video number 7. I also talked about the Wells shape and WE Wells. So if you want some background on this particular shape, go check out video number 7. The shape was introduced in 1930 and continues all the way into the late 1940s. But we're only going to look at the Art Glazes. So we'll look at some items and some glazes, then we'll check out some advertisements and documentation and try to reconcile a timeline for the art glazes. So this is burnt sienna or rust or brown as it's sometimes called. In the back is a 15 inch platter, the handled cake plate. Here we have a covered 24's jug or a batter jug and in front is a covered 42's jug or a covered syrup. We'll look at the back stamps because there are two different markings used on the art glazes. This is the first one. It just says Wells Art Glazes. There's no date code, no mention of Homer Laughlin, no logo. The second one is the same, but it has Made in the USA added underneath. Covered sugar and creamer. In fact, we'll look at this sugar bowl because it's a pretty splotchy glaze. Sometimes you get a nice, even, consistent glaze like you see on the flatware. But on hollowware, it can be a bit splotchy. And I kind of like that. I like it the messier, the better when I'm collecting the art glazes. We see it on this gravy as well the inconsistency of the glaze. So there's your gravy booth. There's also a gravy fast stand. Double egg cup. This particular egg cup originates with the well shape. It would go on to be used with several eggshell lines. Tea cup and saucer. demi tash sugar. There's no lid for the demi tash sugar. It's an open sugar. Again, we see that splotchiness going on. Demi-tasse creamer. French casserole from Oven Serve. A little unusual. This must have been intentional because it is marked dark glazes. It's possible that they just dipped a set of these and mixed it in with sets instead of soup bowls. And a deco ashtray. These deco ashtrays were introduced in 1931. They are essentially pickup pieces. So you may find them with Oven Serve back stamps or General Homer Lachlan marks. But for the art glazes, they're going to have that art glaze mark. That's going to be hard to see because of the glaze. We'll look at the green one because you can see that better. In fact, if we put them side by side. Let's do it this way. The green one, the rings are close together. The rest one, they're further apart. So this is the first version. This is the second version. Leaf green, also known as green, sometimes called jade green in advertisements. In the back is a square plate. It actually has eight sides, but it's called a square plate. Teapot. We'll look at this because that same splotchiness we saw in brown, you usually see in green as well. And again, it's going to be mainly the hollowware. Actually looks kind of blue in some places. After dinner or demi tasse coffee pot, demi tasse sugar and creamer, double egg cup, 36's bowl. Please do not call those cranberry bowls. I already did a video on uh, trade sizes and talked about 36's bowls. Gravy and tango shakers. So, what we're going to see when we look at some of these documents is that. Uh, the art glazes were discontinued in 1941. Tango's introduced in the late 1930s, so there's a small window where the tango shakers were picked up and used with the Wells Art glazes. So here's leaf green, here's French rose. You can also find them in rust. I've not found them in melon yellow yet. And here's French rose, also known as peach or simply rose. 
handled cake plate, square plate, 7 inch plate, teapot. Now a lot of the rose pieces, the hollow where you'll see all this yellow highlight going on, especially on edges. But again, another very splotchy glaze. Which someone might reject that and wait to find something a little more consistent, but I like the splotchy glazes. Oven served casserole and French rose. We'll get to that in a moment when we look at the advertisements. Batter jug and syrup jug, or if you go by the trade sizes, a 24's jug with lid, 42's jug with lid. The covered casserole. Again, we see that yellow highlight on the edge and on the handles. And a gravy. Those are the three original art glazes. Burnt Sienna, Leaf Green, and French Rose. Then after oven serve is introduced, around 1933, we see melon yellow. Now most of the melon yellow you're going to find is going to be from oven serve. So there's an oven serve 10 inch plate. Here's an oven serve covered bean pot and melon yellow. Oven serve teacup and saucer. Look at the marking. I've already done a video on embossed oven serve. It was also used on coronet. We've seen this before in the coronet video. But it was picked up and used as a fourth color in the art glazes. So we have a pair of Wells egg cups and melon yellow and then a gravy. And there's Empress teapots. Now this is a little unusual. So we've got this melon yellow on this Empress teapot and it's given this Wells art glaze marking. But we also see the Colgate green glaze that was developed for the apple tree bowls, which I really haven't gone into those quite yet. But the same glaze that was used in the apple tree bowls was also used on the Empress teapots, and these were marked Wells Art Glaze, though neither one of these really have anything to do with the standard Wells Art Glaze line. So more needs to be learned about that. Why were they made? Who did they make them for? When were they made? Are they promotional pieces? Uh, they seem to be promotional pieces because there's no other Empress shapes with art glazes that have been found. So now we're going to look at some advertising and some memos. Let me make some room. And we see this advertisement from newspapers.com. It's from 1930, and it says Gimbel's Art Glazes. And Gimbel's was not the only place to sell us. I mean, on the West Coast, we see advertisements from California with all kinds of different shops that sold the art glazes. But Gimbel's was the largest customer, and there's evidence to suggest um, that they're the ones that started it, and in many cases, it says that it's exclusive. And that may be the case in certain years, but it wasn't always the case. But here we see Gimbel's Art Glazes. You could get 32-piece uh, luncheon sets, 24-piece waffle sets, 22-piece tea sets, and 20-piece breakfast sets in French Rose, Leaf Green, and Sienna Brown, the colors that Gimbel's created. So if we go by this, Gimbel's had a say in the initial art glazes from 1930. This comes from a Montgomery Ward's catalog, and it's showing three Wells lines. We have Flight of the Swallows, decal line, and then Flowers of the Dell, another decal line, but in the middle we have the Wells Art Glazes, and its solid colors are green or rose. And this is a time when mixing and matching colors wasn't done. You know, we're so used to seeing that with Fiesta and Harlequin and Tango and Riviera, but with the Wells Art Glazes it was single color sets. But here there's only two colors. Again, this is 1931 from Montgomery Wards. For the first time we offer Gimbel's Art Glazes. This is uh, 1932. Artists praised Gimbel's Art Glazes and brought it to use in their studios. Um, 
and we see the three art glazes here. I'm trying to see where they're listed. I don't see them listed. But we have all the, the assortment. It's a full assortment. Everything that was available in the well shape you could get in the art glazes. We're going to get to this in a moment. Well, we'll go ahead and do this now. Antique Orleans. So this is 1932. This is J.C. Penney. And we, you can find the Orleans shape, which was developed in 1932, in the three art glazes of rust, green, and rose. And it's sold as antique Orleans, and for a very, very short period of time. So we have a couple examples. Here's a 9-inch plate in leaf green. An oval baker in leaf green. And a 7-inch plate in French rose. These are going to be marked Antique Orleans. This one says Made in the USA. The plate is marked just simply Antique Orleans. I think the baker is marked the same way. I've seen some pieces where it just says Antique and nothing else. So no mention of Homer Lachlan, no date codes. But these come from 1932, made for J.C. Penney, using the Wells Art Glazes. You can also find rust besides the two colors I show here. Nineteen thirty-three, and we see Gimbel's art glazes, Gimbel's brothers. Um, we see a full assortment. You can get open stock, or you can get sets. A twenty-piece set could be had for a dollar forty-nine. Nineteen thirty-three, by request, Gimbel's art glaze, three pieces in jade. They're calling it jade here instead of leaf green, rose, and burnt sienna. April 19th, 1933. So service for four with soup plates for $1.79 in gimbals. French rose, leaf green, and sienna brown. So this is a letter from gimbals to Frederick Reed. It's dated October 5th, 1933. This part I've blocked out. It is of a personal nature, not relevant to this video. However, this is relevant. And it says, I am impatiently waiting for some news regarding the new art, yellow art glaze. I would like to mail my initial order on a pretty large basis, but I'm still waiting to hear from you whether the experiments turned out satisfactory. And this man's name, I don't know how to pronounce it, but I will just show it and spell it out. U-J-L-A-K-I of Gimbals is asking for yellow um, Again, that's October 5th, 1933. And here is October 15th, 1933, Gimbals. We're seeing the same three colors, leaf green, sienna brown, French rose. June 20th, 1935. So now we have the Wells art glazes on the oven serve casseroles and the underplate. This is from San Francisco, California. If you already own a set of Wells Art Glaze, you'll order one of these casseroles. So you could have this in yellow, rose, rust, or green. So if you get it in yellow, technically you have oven serve. You do not have Wells Art Glazes. But you can also get rose, rust, and green, and here's your rose version. I don't have the underplate that goes with it. I have seen examples of the other colors. This one's from uh, Los Angeles, California, 1936. And by this time, we're seeing all four colors. So we've got a sale on Wells Art Glaze Pottery in California colors. And we see leaf green, French rose, melon yellow, and rust brown. 1936, Wells Art Glaze open stock. Choice of four colors, leaf green, rust brown. Here they're calling it lemon yellow and French Rose. There's your four colors. 1939. So we have Gimbel's Art Glaze and we have French Rose, Melon Yellow, Sienna Brown, and Leaf Green. I wanted to show this one in particular because they're picking up the Nautilus Lug Soup um, and using it in the Art Glaze line as a pickup piece. You also find the Ivora Lug Soup was done 
as well. You know, I talked about the Arvora lug soup in the previous video on Rose and Poppy. But I have seen some of those marked with the Art Glaze back stamp. So I thought this was an interesting correspondence. This is from Edmiston out of New Jersey. And it's dated June 5th, 1939. Will you be kind enough to send me a price list, an illustration if possible, of the Brown Wells Art Glaze? Our capacity is very limited, but I, want, I believe we could work up some business that would really amount to something in this design. So the response, here's the copy of the response dated June 6, 1939, by J.D. Thompson of Homer Lachlan. It says, we have your letter of June 5th about the Brown Wells Art Glaze. We take it that this glaze was seen in Gimbel's New York store. We make the art glazes exclusively for Gimbel's in that part of the country, and of late they have decreased in sales, so actually we do not want to get you started on them because we think one of these days we are going to discontinue them. Again, this is 1939. We are enclosing folders to show this new Serenade color glaze line, as well as our regular Fiesta. You can get either line from our wholesale distributors. Signed, J.D. Thompson, Omer Lachlan China Company. So he's telling, uh, trying to steer him away from Burnt Sienna and into something else, particularly Serenade, which was new at the time. And then we get a response, June 8th. So it says, I will appreciate it if you will let me know if you are not, if you have not definitely decided to discontinue the Brown Wells Art Glaze, as I think it would be. We well, let me start over. As I think we would be willing to place a small order, even if it is to be discontinued later on. I have not seen it in Gimbel's, but what I refer to is that which L.B. King and Company of Detroit have carried for a number of years. And then J.D. Thompson responds yet again. We have received your letter June 8th about the rust art glaze. He gives him a scale price. But he goes on to say, but frankly, we just question whether or not we should supply it to you. This type of crystalline glaze does not run uniform, and we ship out the best we can of it. But it is certainly far from perfect, and we would not want you to get into a bunch of complaints by trying to satisfy you with uncertain glaze. And again, he's trying to get him to go in to get serenade instead. The last thing to look at is dated September 11th. 1941. This is an internal memo from Homer Lachlan to Frederick Reed from J.D. Thompson. As you know, we are discontinuing the art glazes in the four colors. It is suggested that you have the proper sample set aside for historical records. So for the art glazes, we're talking 1930 to 1941, mainly Gimbel's Brothers as the seller. So since we're talking about art glazes, I want to mention one more thing. Old Roman. I need to make some room here for a moment. Because if you find Old Roman, which is a very limited line, early 1930s, sometimes it will be marked with the Wells Art Glaze back stamp. So let's look at some pieces. Rim soup or deep plate with Roman pheasant. This is trellis. I wanted to pull this out because it's a shared treatment. The Roman pheasant. We also see the light yellow Depression era glaze, transparent glaze, not at all like melon yellow, which is more opaque. Some square plates. Old Roman, and most of these pieces are going to be marked Old Roman. Some orange poppies. Vase with flowers and green edge, or green verge line. Old Roman back stamp. Platter with black verge and green inside line. Again, marked Wells Art Glazes. Our sugar, which is an open sugar, has a patent number. Old Roman. We already looked at the creamer. And we have a nappy. Oh, not a nappy, a baker. This is marked Old Roman as well. 
So we can look at a control sheet and see just how limited this shape was. This is early 1930s, made at the same time as Nolan Trellis. As a matter of fact, we see some price scales for yellow glaze Nolan Trellis, green glaze Nolan Trellis. Here's the Wells Art glazes, rust peach and green. And then we see Old Roman, made in green and yellow glazes. And there, there's your assortment. So the baker, the creamer, uh, a platter, which we see here. There's only one size of platter. Fruit cup, plate, okay, that's trade sizes. So a four inch plate would actually be closer to six inches. A seven inch plate would be about nine inches. The deep plate would be about eight inches. The square plate would be about eight inches. The teacup, the open sugar, no lid for the sugar. And then another plate, this is about a seven inch plate. They've got a five inch trade size. So that's a little bit about Old Roman. I wanted to point that out simply because of the marking. And I think that this is a case where we saw in video seven with the peacock marking that it was used on not only the well shape, but century and jade and even Virginia Rose to a certain extent. So try not to read too much into this. This is not part of the standard Wells Art Glaze line, even though it has this marking. The same is true for those Empress teapots. One last thing, since I mentioned the uh, Wells Peacock, I have one piece to show. This is a, a little shelf sign. It says Wells in the bottom. I don't know if that's going to show up because the glaze is pretty thick on here. Glazed in dark blue from Fiesta. Joe Cunningham shows one of these in her book, A Giant Among Dishes. It has some hand-painted details on it. And there's one at the morgue uh, at Homer Lachlan. It's actually the uh, dummy model. But I wanted to show that uh, since we're talking about Wells and the art glazes and the peacock. So that's going to be it for now. Uh, next time, we're going to look at a particular Virginia Rose decal, VR-235.